Across the animal kingdom, different animals are known for having different traits. Most birds are known for their ability to fly. Most mammals are known for being furry and warm-blooded. And reptiles are known for being scaly and cold-blooded. Because reptiles are cold-blooded, they rely on the sun for warmth. And this means that very few of them are found in cold climates. This is one of the many reasons why there aren't crocodiles in the Arctic. But there are some rather surprising examples of reptiles that live in cold climates. Reptiles aren't often found in areas where it's cold year-round, but they are able to survive the cold for a few months. One of the ways in which reptiles deal with the cold is through brumation. This is a state or condition of sluggishness and inactivity, and is essentially the reptile version of hibernation. In this video I will be going through just a few reptiles that can deal with the cold, as I will be going through three reptiles that can deal with freezing conditions. And for our first species we can head over to North America, as we have the painted turtle. The painted turtle has quite a large distribution, and can be found over most of the central and eastern states, and also into Canada. Over this large area it has a few subspecies, these being the eastern painted turtle, the midland painted turtle, and the western painted turtle. It can be quite hard to tell some of these subspecies apart, but one of the easiest ways is to look at the underside of their carapace. These turtles typically inhabit slow-moving freshwaters, and are most happy in large wetlands with lots of vegetation. All subspecies of painted turtle will eat both plants and animals, and although their diets do slightly vary, they mostly feed on insect larvae, crayfish, aquatic plants, and fish. Although their shells do offer a lot of protection, they aren't completely safe, as they are targeted by predators such as foxes, snakes, raccoons, and other turtles. Because this turtle is found in some parts of Canada, it does have to be prepared for some cold winters. This distribution also makes them the northernmost turtle species, and they are possibly the most cold tolerant. Their behaviour completely depends on the seasons, because in the spring and summer months they spend their nights sleeping on the bottom of ponds and lakes, and then start to become active at sunrise. This is often when you'll see many of them basking together, before they start hunting and looking for food. In the late autumn and winter their behaviour completely changes, as they'll start to put on more fat and eventually become less active. In areas where the water completely freezes over, some of these turtles will burrow into the bottom of lakes and ponds, and once there their blood temperature drops to around the same temperature of the surrounding water. In some cases their heartbeat completely stops, and they only have minimal brain activity. They will often stay like this for months, and although you may think they will drown after such a long period under the water, because there is very little activity in their body, they can hold their breath for months at a time. This means that they can wait out the entire winter in this way, and it's a very similar story for the hatchlings too. Turtles that hatch in the late autumn often freeze, and they'll stay like this for the entire winter. Once the temperature warms up and their bodies thaw, eventually these turtles will start moving again, and can eventually start their lives after months of being frozen. So even though they can't survive in freezing temperatures their whole life, this is a very impressive ability nonetheless. But for our next species we will be staying in North America, but we can move slightly south, as we have the American alligator. I have featured this reptile quite a lot on the channel recently, and it's not on purpose. The American alligator just seems to fit into a lot of videos that I've been doing recently. Alligators are one of the top predators in the US, and are one of the most iconic predators on the North American continent. They are complete masters of wetland habitats, and will happily feed on anything in and around the water. As I've covered on recent videos, they do a great job at controlling invasive species, which are a real problem over most of their range. Although most of us only see their mean side, these reptiles can be quite caring too, as they're one of the few reptiles that look after their young. This helps their chances of reaching adulthood, and is one of the reasons why they're such a successful species. Despite this, adult alligators aren't too caring towards other alligators young, and in one Florida lake, adult alligators ate around 7% of the juvenile population each year. Because alligators are found in some of the warmer, swampy states, you might think that they're not very cold tolerant. This is partly true, otherwise they would be found further north. But over short periods of time, alligators are quite good at dealing with the cold. Throughout most of the alligators' territory, freezing water is rare. But when it does happen, you might be able to witness a very strange sight. In some areas where the water freezes, you'll see alligator snouts poking out of the water, and although it may appear that they are dead, they are very much alive. This behaviour is known as icing, and is essentially a form of brumation. The alligator completely lowers its metabolic rates, and lie motionless with only their snouts poking out of the water. If their bodies were to completely freeze, they would die, but if only the surface of the water freezes, they can 
survive. Unlike the painted turtle, they can't stay this way for too long, and are only able to survive brief periods of freezing. Once the weather eventually begins to warm back up, they will slowly start to become more active, and eventually they should resume their lives as normal. So even though the American alligator isn't really a cold weather reptile, it does do a very good job at dealing with brief periods of cold weather. But for our final species, we will be heading into the oceans, and we will be looking at another turtle, as our next species is the leatherback sea turtle. This turtle is the heaviest non-crocodilian reptile, and can reach lengths of 1.8 meters and weights of up to 500 kilograms. It gets its name for its leather-like skin that covers its shell, and its size and appearance makes it one of the most unique reptiles on this planet. Although sea turtles are often associated with shallow tropical regions, leatherback sea turtles travel the world. They have the widest range of any turtle, being found as far north as Newfoundland, and being found as far south as New Zealand. The leatherback sea turtle's jewels are quite fragile, and instead of having teeth, they have sharp edges on their beaks. These beaks help them to dispatch their prey, which in most cases is jellyfish and other soft-bodied creatures. To find these prey items, they often travel large distances, and they also travel down to the depths. They are the deepest diving turtles, diving to depths of over a kilometre, and this even rivals some diving whales. Unfortunately today, the leatherback sea turtle is listed as vulnerable. The story behind this listing is very complicated, because there are simply so many threats that the leatherback sea turtle is facing. Almost all sea turtles are classified as endangered, with two of the seven species being listed as critically endangered. One of the main reasons why sea turtles are threatened is because they're running out of places where they can lay their eggs. Of course, sea turtles like to lay their eggs on beaches, and they will often return to the same beach that they hatched from. Humans also like to enjoy beaches, and so do big companies looking to make money. Hotels and resorts are often built on beaches where turtles lay their eggs, and this completely disrupts them and can also lead to their eggs being trampled. They are also often caught as bycatch, and in some parts of the world they are still poached. It really is a shame that these turtles are in such a perilous situation, because they are one of the most unique reptiles on this planet. As some of you may already know, the waters of the Northern Atlantic Ocean and the Southern Ocean can be quite cold. As well as this, the deeper you go, the colder it gets, and this means that this cold-blooded reptile has to deal with some very cold waters. You'd think that these cold waters would make the leatherback turtle's body shut down, but surprisingly it's able to deal with these conditions. The leatherback sea turtle isn't exactly warm-blooded, but it is able to keep its body temperature at around 26 degrees Celsius. This turtle does have a thick layer of fat, but it does have another impressive adaptation that helps it survive in cold waters. It has a specialized blood vessel structure, which is called a countercurrent exchanger. This system runs warm blood from their inner bodies out to their extremities next to the cold blood running back inwards. The two blood temperatures participate in heat exchange, and therefore the cold blood is warmed before re-entering the body. This allows them to maintain a body temperature that's higher than the surrounding water, and also allows them to be one of the most cold-tolerant reptiles in the world. This ability only adds to how impressive this turtle really is, and even though it's technically not warm-blooded, it is a very impressive ability nonetheless. Of course, there are a few other reptiles that could have made it on this list, so if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.